morning. Good 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 morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. It's great to be here again. From my little bird to high How are you doing? How are you? Okay. We are. We are. We have a great panel here. I'm gonna let you just go ahead and introduce the the case. I. You know who's here, so <laughs> go ahead. Yeah, okay. yeah, great, yeah. great friend, great expert. So we are okay. Uh, okay. We are well. happy, really happy. And so Elvis Bursic, my friend and colleague here, and uh, Amr and all the team of the Maria Pia Hospital. And we have also uh, the super expert of Ivo Stefan Carrier that uh, uh, was able to fly it, uh, tonight to Turin. So thank you, Stefan, <laughs> and all the team. So Elvis, please. Okay. We have a great case, a really complex uh, for yes, you. Yes. And uh, we will see. Okay. Okay. Welcome to the second session of like cases. I'm going to present you a case a complex of 54 years old male with um, various uh, uh, vascular factor, uh, coronary factors, risk, cholesterolemia, ex-smoker, previous smoker. Uh, the clinical history started the failure because uh, at the age of the 12 years, years he had uh, non-Hodgkin lymphoma uh, that uh, needed the treatment with the chemo and radiotherapy. And um, then uh, he, had all, he had also a problem with the sarcoma in 2001. The cardiological history started in September on uh, um, uh, 2013. And uh, um, uh, we think that it could be all because of, radio yeah. Yeah. We think that, uh, because of actinic disease, he developed a severe stenosis of an aortic valve. So um, he was. Um, uh, he underwent um, uh, so the substitution of uh, aortic valve with uh, mechanical prosthesis, so RB21, uh, and also a double coronary artery. And um, then he had an admission in September on 2021 for a heart failure with evidence of um, during an atrial fibrillation, fast atrial fibrillation, and with evidence of depressed ventricular function. And, um, the arrhythmia was treated with uh, ablation, but um, he again um, underwent another problem with uh, again a severe uh, congestive heart failure with evidence of very depressed the left ventricle in uh, November 2021. And, uh, the coronary angiography evidenced the presence of a double occlusion of the, of the both of the, gra uh, the grafts with the stenosis of left main, uh, CTO of the uh, CERC, and also so the right coronary. So he, he underwent to a, a PCI with the implantation of a dance in the left main. Um, but uh, after a brief period of, of uh, without symptom, uh, he again had a problem during an uh, 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 arterial fibrillation, again congestive heart fa uh, failure, uh, with needed with uh, treated with the cardioversion. At the ECO, the evidence was about 35 percent of um, uh, ejection fraction. So this is the coronary angiography with the evidence of the problem of the mammary, both of occluded. And the, the right the student, and also the problem of the uh, coronary, uh, left coronary uh, to the uh, uh, intrastent uh, restenosis. So he was uh, treated um, uh, again with a, a, a PCI. This is the, um, uh, uh, the result of after the, uh, the procedure. Okay, uh, he was uh, underwent a uh, scintigraphy that evidenced the presence of uh, a large, uh, severe ischemia with a, a very large burden of ischemia and with evidence of a uh, functional uh, fraction very, very long. Uh, um, ten days ago, he again he, he faced the problem after uh, the after fibrillation of a congestive heart failure, and was uh, treated with um, uh, with evidence of a uh, depressed uh, left ventricular function. So, this is the echo just uh, um, yesterday. Uh, yesterday. We can appreciate the presence of a, a very depressed uh, function of the left ventricle. And with the mild matter regurgitation. 
Yes, so stop. stop. We stop. No, stop. 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 Yes. At this point, and, uh, yeah. yeah, we want to uh, discuss with you, with you uh, uh, the option. Uh, the option. Yes. Yeah. So uh, our goal is try to open uh, both artery. Uh, we have a big circle and uh, osteo right occlusion, and uh, uh, the stent of left main is under expanded. So, which is your uh, your? We can be your strategy. So you can discuss and then we, we can tell you uh, our strategy. Have you have you taken any uh, setup shots today? Maybe it'd be interesting to just see if you're... If, uh, no, if, uh, we will take you, we will give you to late, later because we will not want to discover our our strategy. So, uh, yeah, so <laughs> you, you, you have a third CTO, you have a right CTO, exactly. and, 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 and uh, we've got tons of ischemia so i guess it will be where where's the low the low the low hanging fruit for the first procedure because in the end it's 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 all possibly contributing to the ischemia territory absolutely so so the philosophy do you start with the low hanging fruit easier to open less risk of complication than you build up or you take the highest risk and you go down from there what what's your guys strategy so Generally speaking, I think that you have to start with uh, CTO that you, you like more. You like more? Yeah. yeah the, Why do you like it? <laughs> it's maybe very difficult, but uh, it's, uh, you have a good collateral and so on. And uh, you leave the board and you want that uh, equal to your opinion as, a, uh, as more of territory, as giving territory. Prima, then it's light. Right. So you, I think if, if you think that both contribute equally to the burden of ischemia, then I'd go for the low hanging fruit. If there was one more responsible for the, the scheme you were seeing, the LB, I'd definitely choose that one first. Yes. But the, the advantage here, if you are able to revascularize one vessel, uh, perhaps create a uh, different retrograde option to the other, and guess your biggest bang for your buck initially with an EF of 35%, I'd go for that. Not sure I'll tackle both during the same session, but we'll see how it works. Second thing, this is a non-CTO thing, but I think this patient has shown repeated issues with AF recurrences and, and failed ablation. So I'd also consider ablating the AV node and putting in a CRT. And I think here they have the, you're, you're having a stent into the left main that's jailing an osseal circumflex. Uh, that makes the circ a much challenging, uh, a much more challenging procedure at the moment uh, versus the right that that has not had the, the, the work of, uh, of a human. And uh, so uh, I, I, in my perspective, I would certainly start with the right, but I, I look forward to, uh, to hear uh, Roberto's uh, perspective on this. Roberto, show us your way. Uh, stop, stop poking yeah, us. Fun, but that give us the answer, please. Yeah, great. That a point is uh, just, uh, just about the mechanical support in this case. Yes. Well, so you have a mechanical valve, there are support, of course, for this patient. So uh, uh, did you do right heart catheterization, Roberto? No, 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 we didn't do, we didn't do. Because uh, yeah, because on the echocardiogram, you could see it was the shape of the RV. Yeah. And I'm wondering about pulmonary hypertension in this case. And, and, and pulmonary hypertension is clearly a, a, you know, something to monitor during very complex procedures. And I think a uh, right arm cath could have been helpful unless you're, uh, I mean, uh, on the, uh, yeah. the right ventricle is okay, it's normal. Yeah. And uh, on the echo, the, the pulmonary pressure is, is uh, normal. So it was normal? Uh, only Good, okay. We can have. So tell us what you've, uh, what you've decided to do. Uh, 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 okay, okay, so let's go to the, to the slide, to the slide. Uh, considering the, uh, is the, the complexity of the procedure and the, uh, with the large ischemic part and the depressed electroventricular function, we decided to do this procedure with the support. And so, consider the presence of, uh, of the prosthetic valve, uh, the, um, the choice for, was for uh, ECMO, an ECMO support. This is the uh, CT scan uh, with the uh, orderly ephemeral with a good. Uh, um, uh, for the evaluation of, of the approach, we decided so an approach by bifemoral with the uh, percutaneous approach for the uh, for the HICMO, uh, by uh, left femoral uh, and with the, uh, for the right femoral for the, the, the PCI. Next one. 
So this is a, our strategy is to do ECMO, cardio help, uh, yeah. mechanical support with 17 French uh, uh, on the artery, 23 on the vein, yeah. on the um, uh, left femoral. And uh, we want to evaluate first the, the left main. So we have the idea to evaluate with shockwave uh, optimization of the left main stenting uh, and IVUS for the circ. Uh, uh, in my mind, uh, the CERC is more complex, but it's more important in terms of ischemia, of uh, anatomy. So I will try uh, to try to open the CERC and then uh, and then the right, but we can see during the, the procedure. So I can go uh, live wow. now. We got a program for the day here, right? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We're going to have, have dinner. Uh, have to have dinner and, and wait for you uh, later. And we'll see you tonight. So sh show us. So uh, interesting, the ECMO uh, uh, approach. Uh, once you've decided ECMO, why a 17 French cannula instead of a 15? Are you really worried about the flow and everything? What? What, what would you have been your what would have been your uh, your selection uh, account? So my decision about the outflow cannula. So you have to remember when you do ECMO, the bigger the cannula, the bigger the flow. So um, and it's an R square. So it, it, the flow correlates with R square. So one millimeter extra in the in the cannula actually gives you a lot more flow. So my decision all based on the size of the peripheral arteries. If I have a big femoral artery, I'll put 19 French. Yeah, but, because, but here you're doing it as a support for in case something. You're not going to go and run this circuit at four liters if the patient is not crashing. So why would you need to, to go with, with, with large cannula where actually at some point a, a three or four liters would be, would be achievable with a 15 French? So it depends on the size of the patient. Correct. So if the patient is large size, it's going to need more support. You put a mechanical circuitry support, not because you only want to support your your case. You also want to predict complications. Yeah. If the patient have a complication, develops an artery failure, and the patient stay on support, you want to provide full support. And honestly, um, I never ever seen one said, I wish I had less support. Patients, if you start with the right support from the get-go, that's actually the support that can help your patient. Very, uh, it's interesting, uh, but maybe we've we've, ta we've taken a few steps ahead. Let's take one step back. Uh, yeah. Any, yeah, any? Okay. I'd yeah. like to to hear about the panel. Just support or not? Is it something that that you uh, you know we have an EF of thirty-five. We've got a mechanical valve. Uh, of course, we're going to go retrograde here. Uh, who would uh, have taken, uh, you know, the risk of not supporting this patient? And in which condition should we, uh, should, and what is the argument for those who would not want to support here on the panels? If someone in this, this, this situation, the patient that they have failure, the multiple failure, so it's, uh, he has a failing myocard, so he, there is no option to Usually, if it's like this, not uh, so complex, of course, but uh, I use a 70, uh, 70 French uh, uh, cannula for the echo. And I was surprised that I use uh, a, a guiding cutter that we found side doors because I was uh, confident that the echo will support, will support the, the art. And uh, he had a, a very, very bright and uh, immediate uh, ischemia while. Why I, I was uh, crossing through the guy was so I had to remove and replace the guiding cutter with the side of uh, guiding cutter. So I think that's uh, in this condition you have not you cannot crash. So you have to uh, st uh, stress as much as you can. Yeah, go ahead. Yes, uh, we want you to be yeah, at the yeah, to tell us. Actually, this is yeah, so, so uh, we start we start for the femoral to evaluate the. Yeah, the, right. the approach, and then uh, sorry, then uh, the, we have also problem of the occluded of the right radial artery, and this is the left radial. So we have no radial possible for cannulation. So I went to a double femoral access uh, on the right femoral for uh, for coronary artery. So this is the, we have the second seven French. So we have eight French and seven French this is in parallel. On the right femoral, right, and then we 
that we have the ECMO here is all, all percutaneous. Yes. On the uh, Elvis was great, put great faster on the left femoral. And then, then we start for the first angel. This is the, the angel. We have two surprises. The first one we have uh, Rival Wade with Ibus that Stefano will be able to show you. We have two problems on the LED. This is the, the angel of the left system. You can see where, Well, Alberto, uh, at this point, you, you, you're, you're, <clears throat> you've inserted your, your arterial candida. Are you running your ECMO? Yeah. Are you just running at one liter? What yeah, is it? Yeah, yeah. The, the, yeah, we are running, running it with more than yeah, four, liters, liter. uh, yeah. four liters uh, of uh, we have, yeah, yeah. output. We have four liters of, uh, four liters. of okay, no, no, no. the patient yeah, needs to just be... Just a second, let him finish. Be, yeah, it's, it's, it's one you could argue, uh, in, in I would have probably just run at one liter and wait for something, because what you're doing at, at the moment is you're increasing the afternoon on this LV... Uh, uh, of this I didn't get how many liters are they running at? Say that again, Ahmed. How many liters are they running at? We are already on four. On four liters. Full support. Yes. Yes. So, so uh, Roberto, this is Ahmed. Okay. Any, any, Roberto, sorry. Any particular reasons why you want to go on near full flow? Because exactly this is, you're increasing the afterload and if the yeah, LB starts but, to extend, uh, yeah, man, we, don't have we, a, we start, we start to... We don't have a septal function, we don't have an impeller option. Understand. So, then you will run into trouble. So let's go to CDI boost, uh, Stefan. Roberto is not when, when, you, uh, so when you're going, when you're going on X, I the line, these kind of guys, the run the are like uh, so uh, low, uh, yeah, while to have them adjust. Yeah, step up when you need, and then you step it up as needed. But you always, always, always start low. That's, that's the first thing you don't want to do is start unless it's a crashing, dying patient. You never start at the highest rate because you will load the ventricle and decompensate them. So it's exactly. always start testament two liters let them rest for a minute and then you escalate as needed which has the guys yeah. guys I do, I do have a few comments i mean if you're gonna do ECMO in an elective patient why not call a surgeon have a cut down because the, you know the puncture is, is easy but the closing is more difficult yeah. so in terms of we've done a couple of dozens of these and we always have the surgeon do such a cut down then yeah. they'll go 19 francs 20 francs and there's no complication that's one and then two is if you're gonna do uh, support uh, you know, it, I, I have a little bit of doubt because the anti-grade CERC seems relatively favorable. You have a stop. The lesion length is short. You have a good distal target. You can do wiring or a stingray. It will not elicit ischemia. This, will, this procedure will not cause uh, heart failure in this case. Then you open up the CERC, take the patient back off the table, and bring him back in due time for right. And you can evaluate what happens. Apparently, this guy, with, with help, stood a PCI of left main. So it's not likely to kind of crash um, during, during the PCI CCTO of CERC. If he survives the left main, it's going to survive the circuit and, and the brain also. So I'm having a little bit. Paul, Paul, listen, listen, Paul, Paul, listen, listen, sorry, because we need to go on. So, yeah, okay, yeah, so sure. uh, if we go on, we cannot talk. So listen, we need to do a shock wave, we need to treat the left main. Long inflation, the left main is the owner of any vessel. So we can, we, the problem is that it's not only the circuit, but it's the left main that is not good. So we need to plan, these are very uh, long points. inflation, the left main. So this is a we need to, because we need to understand what we are doing, otherwise we lose time. So we, we need to treat the left main with long inflation, and you will see that it's not enough. And then so we need uh, support. When we dilated left main, we have a crash with the one liter of ECMO. So we need to go to four liter. Okay, so that's uh, see the eye if you want to see, otherwise you go in the other lab. Okay. So yeah, this it's lost of avocado and LED. Yeah, the last one. We have these are problems. these are very good points, Roberto. You, uh, you, you, this this case is a well thought process. Uh, you you knew what you were planning to do. You know you have to deal with the last remaining conduit, giving collaterals to everything, and you knew that you would have to wait to work a long time on this case. And that's where I was pointing to uh, to the panel and saying, is this. You know, when is it? I think the, the, the option of using a tandem heart would have been another great solution because then you vent the LV at the same time and you don't uh, increase the, the afterload. Uh, have you considered yeah, it? Yeah, is yeah, it, yeah, is yeah. it available in your center, the, the tandem heart? 
no, no. Or, no, or no, with an LAVA ECMO, it doesn't have to be a tandem heart. What is it? With an LAVA ECMO. We start, have a, we start with a, with a, with a uh, soft ECMO at the beginning, but it was not enough. Because we went to 70 of pressure, uh, we dilated with the huge ischemia, so that's why, why we need to go to uh, up to 4 liters. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Stefan, please go on because otherwise we need to. Uh, no. we, we discovered something interesting in this LED. Look at the eye. You see that the place where we started, the iris were pretty uh, healthy with only 30% of plaque, a vessel of 3.5. But very quickly we arrived to a region where you have this very interesting uh, region, that, that a kind of ulceration with a plaque. You, you see the, the region here that is uh, filling with some blood. We have a huge uh, positive remodeling at, at this level. We can uh, estimate the MLD that was uh, around five millimeters square with 70% uh, of plaque. And uh, if we continue, we will then see that this plaque is rather soft, if we can say. Then the, the proximal references uh, here are reasonable with only 30% uh, of plaque and uh, reference of uh, 4 millimeters. So that will have to be stented. Here we see more superficial calcium and we will arrive at the level of the bifurcation with this uh, diagonal branch that uh, you see coming at 4 o'clock. Then we see just at this level, this is the distal part of the stent in the LED. This is uh, well expanded and fitting to the vessel, but more proximally to our surprise, we saw also some intimal hyperplasia or perhaps some thrombus also that you will see between uh, 9 and uh, 12 o'clock. This is in the distal left main that was uh, just recently stented two months ago. So this, no, six this months is, ago, so this, this is uh, qu quite an uh, early process for having the uh, no intimal hyperplasia coming there, but you see that the lumen in the distal uh, left main was uh, respectable, 14 millimeters square, but more proximally, close to the junction with the guiding, that was under expansion and, and some uh, heavy plaque there that will uh, call for some uh, additional action, and that's why we, we went for the shot. So, in summary, okay. two lesions, one in the left main, and one distally that has to be uh, first uh, treated. You see a very nice example of that from your black here. Thank you, Stefan. And uh, we, we're gonna stay with you for seven or eight minutes just to have an idea of, uh, of the time you guys have. So, uh, Alberto, okay, tell us so where, where you are right to... now and what is the uh, the, the, the first, the, the, what, what you've done so far. Yeah, we, we decided to stand the LED with the, uh, uh, the sky point uh, uh, about 3518 uh, and we post dilate uh, this is the stand uh, the sky point uh, and then we put it with the pot balloon the pot balloon is a uh, uh, non-compliant balloon from Brosman that is uh, with very uh, uh, short uh, uh, shoulder in order to have a good post point dilatation uh, ideally, the location need to do two parts. In this case, we went to a 4 balloon. You can see here the very short shoulder. We can stay. Uh, we can stay precisely inside of the stent, uh, and then we modulate also the left main with this balloon. Then we went to shockwave. Uh, the, the biggest we have is a 4 So we went uh, with eight shock with 4 shockwave for the left main. And then we post, we post the LED with a uh, non-compliant 5-0 balloon. This is a 5-0 emerge balloon with a, a steel notch. This part, because probably the shock wave doesn't go to the uh, completely at the, on the wall of the, the artery. And Roberto, did the patient lose pulsatility when you dilated the left main? He went, he went to 50. 50 of pressure, 50 of pressure, and uh, we, need, we need to increase the ECMO and we need to intubate the patient because it was uh, desaturating. Uh, we tried to do in, uh, in uh, spontaneous breath, but was not what was impossible. We need to, we went to 80 of saturation, so uh, we need to increase the ECMO, we need to intubate. And now we, are, we want to show you the IBUS, 
months uh, after uh, after this treatment and then want to do uh, drug coating balloon with the, uh, the new Sirolimus uh, sequent uh, drug coating balloon 3.5 and then we want to open the circ and uh, you will see later. So uh, show the IBUS now. So uh, Alberto, why would you do your drug coated balloon now <coughs> if you're out to go and work in your circ? Uh, aren't you uh, better to wait for once your circ is open to, to finish with the drug coated balloon? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we can do all sorts. We can do. Yeah, we can do. Okay. So, so okay. Register. Yeah. Yeah. We, we saw the acceleration behind the stand. Yeah. The stand was uh, well expanded. We, we see back the level of the bifurcation uh, with the diagonal now. We have two wires, the, the wires, the twats in the diagonal, and we are arriving in this still somewhat under expanded stand of uh, difficult. This is uh, so. I want we can start with try to understand the, the circ. Uh, I want to try to, uh, to use uh, the venture microcatheter micro angulated because I think that we are it's not so easy to engage the circ. And then we will do the, the drug coffee balloon at the end. It's a, it's a good option. Yeah. It, 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 obviously, the concern <coughs> whenever you're doing drug coated balloon, I think it should always be the last the step. One. The last step of your procedure, you don't want to go back with an IVIS, you don't want to do anything, you don't want to scrub. Yeah, yeah, right, right. I agree. So we take the. This is, a, this is a, a, a an amazing case and how, how you're going to find it. The most important thing, like Roberto, is achieving surgical like results. He's going to achieve that. Complete revascularization. The, the baseline situation now with the advent of and everybody now using ECMO. This case, about five, ten years ago or fifteen years ago, I don't know, still the uh, hospice on referral immediately, huh? as opposed to treating them. And and the person is a team of excellent care for this trying to achieve complete revascularization of this issue. So, right now, uh, Alberto, have you? Uh, uh, is it is it clear to you where the awesome of the circus is? Is that the 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 the, circ, the left main looks like a bit lumpy bumpy but I don't know which what is the uh, what is under expansion of the stent what is residual under expansion what is the true osseum of the circ seems to be a bit ambiguous at the present time it's like there's a nub in the caudal view when you when you lay it out yeah. no, I agree I mean I think there's a, you know, we can put again the ibus uh, to I mean ibus we can try to put again the ibus to understand we can do ibus and the uh, uh, I don't know, in eight French, we can do Ivos and Venture together. Yeah. It's really all we, we, we can try. We can try. The multi territory ischemia in the plan dictated that he was going to be up with a balloon in the left main for a while, compromise. You know, clearly, there's a difference with a, a patient with an EF of 35 that you have a big pulsatility index, blood pressure on 150 over 80. This is not a very oh, long time. 90 over 70. So was I feel like right live. Familiar, things along these lines. Live. No, no weakness. The ECMO allows time to do an excellent procedure, which is what they're doing right now. Right? Yeah. Sure. Yeah. You know, this, yeah. this is the, this is the yeah. Yeah. procedure that going in, inflating the balloon, running away. This is <sighs> I can say really it. Yeah. The, 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 I, honestly, like excellent. I keep what you say, Craig. Having mechanical surgery, I think that this is a point. This is the point. point. Psychological yeah. support, yeah. so you can actually achieve good re PCI results. Right. So, so, uh, so Roberto, walk us through you. So, what, what, what you just recorded is uh, uh, on the on the city is the uh, the position of the awesome of the CIA yeah. for registration. Yeah. 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 You know, one of the yeah. Exactly. Is they they semi electively intubated him and it was not was the fire drill, right? Just, Took care of it. I want to start with the Gaia third, uh, and we want to see. Any uh, uh, so here uh, the challenge is is the stand, and that you have to go through the stand. Uh, any uh, any idea here? Uh, anybody would have used uh, maybe a dual lumen catheter to start here. Is it something that should be considered? It could be a better option because venture is a little bulky, and it's not so easy to. Maneuver because we are not sure that he goes where you like. And we 
the double lumen and uh, Michael Cutley uh, the possibility to change uh, for me, it would have been a, a twin pass torque type of uh, Michael Gatha here. Yeah. You've got lots of space. You can actually point when you want to work. And the, the thing about the twin pass torque as opposed to the twin pass before it, the, the, the second cap, the second pole of the okay. board so actually marked the, the buyer exit after it. Yeah. So it's similar to a micro catheter. It's in yeah. degrees yeah. pitch board, yeah. yeah. and you can torque it. And direct it. And you see, because because the, the, the marker is eccentric mm -hmm. to the wire, so you yeah. can actually see if you're pointing low, <laughs> lower, or higher. So that's one of the great uh, advantages, advantage of the twin pass door. I wish but, it can go through the septal though, but so you can have wire. <laughs> I tried, I didn't go. What about the so uh, uh, deflectable micro catheter? You have yeah. the experience, right? The venture catheter? Yeah. Venture. Uh, yes. But still, you can use the right? Yeah. Okay. So, so you're yeah, about uh, uh, the super cross. I think that this can yeah, give me yeah, much yeah. more support because uh, uh, the other option was the super cross 120 we have yeah. or classical dual lumen. So, uh, we have uh, multiple options. I think that this one, one, can one of the problem with the, the super cross 120 is that you are absolutely committed to soft wire because as soon as you use hard wire the mi the micro catheter is straightened up so <clears throat> this is yeah, one of the limitation of the yeah. super cross and that's the reason why having few ventures on your shelf might be extremely helpful in some situations which are ventures very good for this so from yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> so this is a venture you're using right now and uh, you yeah, this is the venture uh, over the wire venture now we have the Gaia and we try to Wow, looks good. You're, make, you're making very nice progress. I wouldn't be too greedy here. Yeah. If you get into the uh, the vessel structure, I would take that 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 micro gather out, and I would go right away with another micro gather ASAP if you can, right? I like the turnpike spiral to integrate the situation. So wire, is Roberto, it's Mohana to you. Is this an over the wire venture catheter or RX? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 An over the wire. Okay, stop four, stop four. There's the RX, which is much, much, much easier. You can take it uh, you know, on a normal wire so you don't have to exchange. The problem, the problem is that you only can use one wire. Yeah, yeah. looks great. Very good uh, position. That's a shame. Yeah, what to try to understand if I can progress a little bit more in order to be sure not to lose the position. So the wire is Gaia, Roberto? Okay. Gaia, so, Gaia, so, Gaia, Gaia. So, we, so we uh, trap in balloon, trap in balloon, 3-0. So we, we trap, uh, I want to take the, the turnpike spiral, I like it. I think it's the better for the situation. It's my favorite for integrate complex. Once you, once you, so no, once you get in there, for, the angulated micro catheter is not helpful. So you, once you them. get enough purchase, I will take it out and I use a trapping technique to take it out. Yeah. Like you use a trapper, you trap the wire in the tip of the guide catheter. That's the safest and the easiest way to take a catheter out. Another question. Have you faced any problems with the turnpike spider through stand struts? Especially at uh, an acute angulation such as this one. Yeah, <coughs> the fine spiral will interact with the uh, poorly deployed stent. A bit more grab. And, and there are some stents are affected by it more than others. Okay. So there are stents with really thin struts, they could be damaged. Okay. Like, uh, no, I'm more worried about the reverse. Okay, I'm more worried about damaging my turnpike spiral and having issues on the spiral when going through this than damaging the stent. If you the shit. When you go through the stent uh, with uh, the, uh, the uh, turnpike spiral, you have to screw it in and screw it out. You cannot pull it. Okay. If you pull it, it will damage the damage, it will damage each other. <laughs> you know, for that reason, I would probably have used a turnpike spiral, not, not not a spiral, because I'm going through stents. But you know, I think I think there is, I think it's it's also a very good approach. <clears throat> I, I don't want to compromise the support in the spiral. It's very very supportive. Sometimes uh, 
a 0.75 or 0.8 balloon can behave better than a micro tester. You know, uh, we're gonna we're gonna watch you ad ad advance the micro catheter into the proximal segment, and then uh, we heard good news from from uh, Taiwan, so we we'll want to go and, uh, and and see uh, their final result, and probably we'll go back to uh, to Andrea a bit uh, a bit after. So I know you guys are making very nice progress. So here's one of the, the, the challenging movement right there is to make the turn. And it's a, it, and it's really a tug, tug the wire sort of a situation where it's only oh, one or one. Let's dilate first. Yeah. So we dilate. Better dilate. Dilate the balloon. So the balloon is a balloon and a half. So the balloon. Yeah. So five. Roberto, is that a Gaia right there? Yeah, Gaia. Gaia turf. So the guy has a, has, a, has a knee now. Now it's kind of violated. Yeah. So the eye would basically go with a softer. It was a 1.5? 1.5. 1.5 balloon? Yeah. The, the, oh, the, point, the point right now is that, you know, because yeah. because it was forced in, there's a, there's a little bend on the wire at this and point, and that might be a bit of an issue. Yeah. So, so, so separate in that, in that spot. Yeah. But did you guys uh, notice? The balloon. The ray cannot cross. Huh? Roberto, we're back with you. Hi. Yeah, so we make some small progress uh, uh, in the sense that uh, uh, this is the, the venture and then this is the fine cross. We decided because we have a small dilatation that was not useful, then the fine cross was able to cross, uh, so it was uh, great, great for us. Then we tried to manage with the uh, Gaia third, uh, no good uh, feeling. Then we, this is the angel, we are outside. We are subintimal. Then now we are with, uh, with the Warrior 14, in which that make progress. This is the Warrior 14. It's in the sub interval. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, my goal was try to to dilate uh, in order to create more space uh, and in order to think about uh, some idea strategy or preparing for uh, retrograde because we have a uh, diagonal uh, with the Picardia connection. The, I am in the with the rear ray two zero, but you can see here uh, it's not able to do any any progress. So. This is the situation which uh, inflate the trumping. We try again with the fine cross. Uh, 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 fine cross what, what is the balloon that advanced. you try to uh, uh, you use a one five Takaro or something uh, or sapphire? Sapphire one five or Takaro one oh. Five. Sapphire one oh. We take uh, we can, we take a real ready two zero. Now we can try with the uh, with the sapphire one five. What this? Yeah, it's it, it, sapphire one uh, and mezzo. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, we try. We, we try together with the sapphire, and then uh, and then we think about. We are thinking about uh, uh, ready to get injection yeah. for the diagonal brand. Uh, in know, the low in the, the low profile micro yes. and I know some 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 people in the audience might be irritated by what I'm gonna say, but uh, in, in the lower profile micro the Mamba Flex 135 is yeah. extremely interesting compared to a a, a fine cross. Because the fine cross you, it doesn't provide any body, any support. You cannot not go with the fine cross. It's very difficult. Whereas the Mamba Flex has got this braiding uh, anatomy, same tapering, and sometimes you can actually start a knuckle where you could not with any other micro catheter. So it's maybe worth uh, considering uh, uh, having on your shelf if you don't, if you don't. But again, here one of the issues is that you want to you want you want to create the dissection plane to be in a happy place for reentry. And now, uh, so Alberto is is working to get uh, his material and get the proximal uh, segment of the coronary more uh, more uh, welcoming. His problem is uh, the osteum, and this is basically a problem. It could be. It could need ablation to be able to be to uh, be able to deliver devices or a stingray. And the problem there is now a stent in there, right? 
Yeah. So that's that's gonna make it a little bit more tricky. Yeah. But I don't think you should waste a lot of time if I'm here. I laid it with one or one. This is a Sapphire one oblation. oblation. Nice. 14, 16. So that's your balloon right now that draws, right? Inflate the store. Yeah, it was a Sapphire 125. That's one of the things Great. you have to know if now. you have a, a ECMO, do not, yeah. get do not get perforation. Thank you. Because uh, yeah. if you have ECMO, you're going to have to give anti anticoagulation. Right. If the patient has perforation, you have to take the ECMO. And if the patient is crashing, you cannot take the ECMO. Does it become a, become a vicious cannot. cycle. But, you know, in any situation, yeah. you should never perforate. I think yeah. that's, that's an ECMO right. message that's here. Yeah. If you don't have an ECMO, you can have all the perforations you want. But <laughs> yeah. It's just that if you have a perforation and you have an ECMO, you are in a deep shit. Yeah, you got it. You got it. <laughs> And the point is that we don't want to put any pressure to Roberto right now. He's using small balloons right now. He's Thank being you. very careful. Roberto, we've been uh, we've been delighted to to watch you working th through the uh, the algorithm of getting into that proximal segment. Uh, and uh, try with the turnpike spiral now. So and to quick. stay on time with the uh, with the program, uh, we will move on uh, with the uh, the lectures, and we look forward to see. Uh, to see your, your result, and hopefully we'll see you tonight at the dinner, and uh, and uh, and uh, with with a smile and, and some good results and some good news. So uh, I we yeah, admire so your patience. I patient. heard that uh, you had uh, you had two great cases from uh, Taiwan and from Andrea. I'm happy. So we hope to have uh, also uh, satisfying results. So see you later. Thank you later. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.